So what's good, TMG fam? It's your boy L, and I'm back with another reaction. How y'all feel? Welcome back to the channel. Salute. Now, real quick, I know a lot of people always entertain the thought of time travel. You know what I mean? Even I've entertained the thought of time travel. Like, you do the whole what if. What if I could go back in time or forward in time? You know what I mean? Just to see what's popping, then come back and create it. Like, go go forward in time, figure out what everybody's going crazy on, what's booming, what's the next best thing, come back this and create it, right? You know what I mean? That's a thought, or go back in time when certain things was gone, and then maybe alter, you know, the future, but you gotta be careful with that. You watch the whole butterfly effect, how that could, you know what I mean? Not actually go the way you thought it could go, you know, so you have to be careful. But I played out, you know, different scenarios in my head. Several different scenarios in my head, you know? So, but who's to say it's going to go that way? Time travel could be tricky, man. Can you imagine going back to... Oh, y'all know, we watched those uh, t torture videos. Remember how they used to do people back in the day? Imagine going back to that time. And seeing that up close in person, like you at a Gallagher event and you sitting in the front row, <laughs> but he ain't smashing fruit, like super, super crazy. So the next video we're going to check out, right, is the top 10 most convincing cases of time travel. Now, whether you believe it or not. You know, does it exist or not? You know, are you just a service person and you're like, man, I watch Hot Tub Time Machine and that's, a, that's the only time travel I care about. Cool. We're going to check this out, see how it goes. If you're new to the channel, man, hit the subscribe button. Join the fam. Real quick, moment of silence for the haters. That's enough. Now, run the likes up. Make sure y'all hit that like button. Here we go. The possibility of time travel is a highly debated topic among both the scientific community as well as just regular old people, but there have been some throughout our history who have claimed to either purposefully or accidentally traveled to a different time period. From a man in the 1990s who suddenly found himself in the middle of a street in the 1950s, to a guy coming back from the year 3036 to warn us all of what's to come and all of the wild stories in between. On today's most amazing top 10 list, we are going to to be talking about the top 10 most convincing cases of time travel. Before we get into this video, you guys, you have to go and check out Rachel and Dewey's new channel, Bumblebee. It just launched, the first videos are up. If you haven't seen them yet, what are you doing? Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the Moberly Jordan incident. This is one of the most famous cases of possible time travel, but it also might just be a ghost story. I don't know. I'm not here to tell you what to think, so I'll just tell you the story and let you decide for yourself. In 1901, two professors from St. Hugh's College in Oxford, England, went to take a little visit to the Palace of Versailles, which if you didn't know was the French royal home until the monarchy was abolished in 1792. That means that this was once the home of Marie Antoinette, and she was one of the last royals to live there before she was executed in 1793. So on this visit in 1901 by these two professors, they're just walking around, seeing the sights, enjoying their time. As they're checking out the private retreat built for Marie Antoinette by her husband, Louis the 16th, boom, out of nowhere, these two just see the Marie Antoinette sitting there, sketching away, dressed in 1780s attire, but not only her, there were a bunch of people also dressed in this same sort of way who seemingly just appeared out of nowhere. Nah, what was they smoking, bro? <laughs> what did they smoke? Something, something. They got some bad stuff. Or in their case, they might have been thought it was some good stuff. Just as quickly as they appeared, however, once the tour guide approached the two professors, all of the people vanished. The pair ended up writing a book about their experience, which was quite successful because of how grounded it seemed. Did they travel through time? Did they see ghosts? Or is this all just made up? 
In our number 9 spot today we have The Bookstore. In 1996 a man and his wife were out in Liverpool doing a bit of shopping. The man's wife went into a bookstore and instead of accompanying her there, he wandered off down the street in search of a CD store. As he strolled down the street he began to notice everything getting quiet. After this he noticed a van that looked like it was from the 1950s that honked and swerved around him. At this moment he realized that he was somehow standing in the middle of the street and that everyone around him was dressed in 50s styled clothing. Like anyone would be in this situation, he was super confused, and he went to head back to the bookstore where he had left his wife, but when he turned around, the bookstore didn't even exist anymore. Where the bookstore was a minute ago was now a women's clothing store, and as soon as he did, it turned back into the bookshop he had initially left his wife in. He was back in 1996 and could not figure out what the heck had just happened to him. After this whole ordeal, he also learned that the clothing store he had seen and gone into hadn't existed since the 1950s either. Whether this is a real time travel story or there's some sort of other explanation behind it, that poor man was probably absolutely terrified. And I See, now, do y'all think, and this just popped into my head, that's why I was, I was like, do y'all think dreams could be somewhat time travel? Because if you think about some of your most, like, crazy, outrageous dreams... It could take you back to moments in time. You could see people that were alive at that time that are no longer living today. You know what I mean? Call me crazy. I know, but just the thought, like, your dreams could be somewhat of time travel. People have all kind of things that they wake up from. They have a dream. They wake up, and they're like, oh, this is what I need to do. Or, oh, I just had a great idea in my dream. Was it from time travel? Like, I think your dreams could be related to some sort of time travel. Number eight spot today we have Hutton and Britt. In 1932, journalist J. Bernard Hutton and photographer Joachim Brandt were sent by the German newspaper to the Hamburg shipyard in order to do a story. Everything was going fine and well and normal and honestly kind of uneventful until things took a large crazy turn. Both Hutton and Brandt realized that they were caught in an air raid and had bombs raining down around them. Brandt, like the dedicated photographer he was, snapped a few photos, but the pair quickly evacuated the area to get to safety. When they returned to central Hamburg all shaken up, no one believed their story at all. They got the photos developed in order to show their proof, but to their surprise, the photos showed no such thing that would suggest the story they were telling. With no evidence and no one around who would believe them, the pair had no choice but to just go on living their lives. 11 years later, however, Hutton was living in London and he opened up the newspaper one day to see what he never expected. The newspaper that day detailed the story of Operation Gamora, which was an air raid on Hamburg, and the photos in the paper looked exactly like what he had experienced 11 years earlier. Did these two somehow end up getting teleported to a time 11 years later while they were out doing that story that day? I truly don't know what other kinds of explanations there could be. In our number seven spot today, we have That's Live crazy. Your Lie. A guy on TikTok who goes by the username Live Your Lie has begun to post videos claiming that he is a time traveler from the year 3036, and he offers his warnings to all of us. He tells his followers that they are as free as they will ever be right now, and that our kids won't even see freedom. He says, so suck it up, because as simple-minded as your time period is, you got it pretty good, you just don't know it. Okay, Mr. Live Your Lie, don't absolutely roast us all. Anyway, when asked about the world population in his year, he says it's just over 2 billion people. He talks about something called the Big Blackout, which he says happens in December of 2052. He says that the Big Blackout is when basically everything goes dark for upwards of 5 years. The internet, the power, it all gets disconnected on account of what's called the terrors. But many- Can you imagine power? out total darkness like do you know what that would do you know what that would do total darkness would do man please you talk about anarchy uh purging you talk about all that type of stuff like that but it would go even further than that man it would affect so many things and that's not that far bro we're in 2021 that's like 30-something years from now. 
speculate otherwise. He says that during these years there's riots, turmoil, and that it's just the worst of times, and that it takes 20 years for things to get fully back online. He also adds that in the year 3036 we still have zoos, but all of the largest animals are gone, so the zoos then actually just consist of animals like dogs and cats. I'm honestly not sure what to make of this one. Like, if he really is a time traveler, I appreciate the heads up on what's to come, but couldn't he have also said like one nice thing about the future? <laughs> right. Also, if time travel exists in 3036, why doesn't everyone just head back in time to when things were good? I don't know. Maybe there's some sort of reason or maybe he's lying. I guess one day someone- She makes a good point though. Why they always give us the negative? Give us the positive. What, what's to look forward to? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, this poverty is wiped out. Everybody's doing good. They're living above, you know what I mean? Uh, like, yeah, yeah. It wouldn't be no no financial wealth gap. Like, I need those type of positives. And we'll find out for sure. In our number six spot today, we have Sir Victor Goddard. In 1935, when Air Marshal Sir Victor Goddard was still a wing commander, he was instructed to head over to an airbase that was located in Drem, Scotland, that was inactive at the moment. As he flew over the base, he noticed it was in pretty terrible condition and that cattle had now begun grazing through the grass that found its way through the tarmac. Later on, as he was still flying, he found himself in a bit of a bad spot due to terrible weather conditions. To avoid any anything bad happening, he decided to land at this inactive airbase and wait out the bad weather. What's weird, however, is as he got close to the base, the torrential downpour abruptly stopped and the sky very suddenly opened up with bright sun shining down. This was weird, but not totally unexplainable. But what was unexplainable is that the inactive airbase could now be seen in full use and full of mechanics in blue overalls working on yellow planes. This was weird for a number of reasons. Firstly, he had just seen the base and it was not even close to looking like this, so how could this all have just come out of nowhere? The mechanics weren't wearing their khaki colored uniforms that were the norm then, and the Air Force didn't use yellow planes, they instead painted all of their planes silver, and there was one plane there that he wasn't able to identify or recognize. Sir Goddard left the situation completely confused and shocked, but that shock only got worse four years later when he visited Drem again. After the years that had passed, when he visited again, then he saw the exact same scene he had seen four years before, like a full deja vu moment. Did he get confused on that day four years earlier? Did he fly into the future? Was this some sort of a flight 828 situation? Unfortunately, there's a good chance we may never know for sure what really happened. In our number five spot today, we have time travel underscore zero. Okay, so this is one that at the time was both one of the most famous and one of the most believed cases around. In the year 2000, an online thread began about time travel paradoxes on a forum for the Time Travel Institute. On the thread, a user commented on how a time machine could theoretically be made, and this prompted the response of a user whose screen name was time travel underscore zero, and they said, Wow, Paul is right on the money. I was just about to give up hope on anyone knowing who Tipler or Kerr was on this word line. By the way, number two is the correct answer and the basics for time travel start at CERN in about a year and end in 2034 with the first time machines built by GE. Too bad we can't post pictures or I'd show it to you. Okay, so this is obviously insinuating that whoever the heck time travel underscore zero is, is a time traveler. Throughout the next year, people continued to post questions and messages they had for this guy on that thread, and throughout time- I know y'all paused it and wrote it down. I know, I know, don't worry, I'm coming back to this. <laughs> time travel underscore zero became known as John Titter, and he told us all his story in great detail. He said that he had been sent back to 1975 in order to bring an IBM 5100 computer to his own time, but he was just stopping into 2000 for a brief rest on his way back home. I guess Guess time travel is exhausting? I personally would not know. He said that the reason for the mission to get the computer was because he needed it to debug various legacy computer programs in 2036 in order to combat a known problem where UNIX was going to have a problem in 2038, similar to what people thought was going to happen in the changeover from 1999 to 2000. There definitely are people out there who still believe that John was a real time traveler, so I guess I'll just leave this one up to you to decide. In our number four spot today, we have the time. See, everybody's crazy until they're not. 
Just always remember that. They could very well much so be crazy, but everybody's crazy until they're not. Traveling hipster. This photo appeared on the Virtual Museum of Canada website and it was originally taken in 1941. The photo is said to have been taken at the reopening of the South Fork Bridge in Goldbridge, British Columbia, Canada. At a first glance, this photo is just normal and that story sounds perfectly reasonable, but once we take a closer look, it is clear why this photo went viral. There's that one guy in it who isn't dressed similarly to anyone else in the photo. What's funny about this is some people aren't time travelers, but they're time traveling hipsters and they don't even know it, bro. <laughs> you know, you know, you got that one aunt or grandparent that or, or uncle, probably an uncle. That's who it is. It's probably your uncle who still wear clothes like he's stuck in the 70s and the 60s and you know what I mean? The 80s still wearing them clothes, hoping that it come back. It's not coming back around, bro. <laughs> you have to tell him, be like, unk, you can't be wearing this, unk. I can't have you out here looking like that, man. You know it, you know it. Everybody got one in their family. Photo. While someone with their own unique personal style isn't exactly an anomaly, it certainly is very weird and suspicious that he seems like he could be from our current times, which is exactly why he has been dubbed the time traveling hipster. It appears as though he is wearing a more modern style of sunglasses, some sort of printed t shirt with a cardigan over top, and it even looks like he is holding some sort of compact camera that wasn't exactly widespread in the 1940s. Maybe the time traveling hipster really is just that. Or maybe he really just was a guy from 1941 who walked off the beaten path so that hipsters today could run. I'm not really sure what to make of this one, to be so honest. In our number three spot today, we have Andrew Carlson. On January 28th, 2003, Andrew Carlson was arrested and held by the police for insider trading at Wall Street. This was because of the fact that in two weeks through the stock market, Andrew was able to go from having $800 to making 350 million. Yep. $350 million in two weeks. That is absolutely insane. When the authorities arrested him, they assumed he made his profits through obtaining illegal insider trading information. But when they asked him how he was able to do this, Andrew said that he was actually from the year 2256. And so he knew exactly how all of the stocks were going to perform. Obviously, no one believed this story and just assumed he was telling an extremely far-fetched lie, which in circumstances like this would seem like a pretty safe assumption. But at this. When Andrew was released on bail, he totally disappeared, and despite several attempts to find him, no one has ever been able to locate him. To make matters even a little wilder, it is said that he was also able to accurately predict the exact date of the US invasion of Iraq. Not sure how, but that's what the internet tells me. In story. our number two spot today, we have Edward. Edward is a man who has claimed that he has proof of the apocalypse, and he even brings photos along to prove it. Edward first appeared on Apex TV, which I'll be the first to admit hasn't exactly been a source of credible information, but who knows, maybe this is the time that they got it right. Edward claims that he was part of a top secret program in 2004, and that he was chosen to time travel to the year 5000. This photo I just talked about is a photo that Edward carries that shows Los Angeles completely underwater. In oh, fact, Edward says that in the year- I was wondering if that's what that was. I didn't know where, but it looked like a city underwater. And we was just talking about that yesterday, or was it yesterday? I don't know, my days is running together, but you know what I'm saying? We was just talking about that, man. New York, Florida. Was Los Angeles one of those? And it could possibly be. Like starting, you know how you all, you hear something once and then you start hearing it over and over again. It's like they're kind of trying to program you. Year 5000, the entire world is underwater, but humans have found a way to live on the water. He claims it happened because of global warming and explained that there was just too much CO2 in the air, which step by step destructed the natural shield zone. I'm not a Photoshop expert, so I wouldn't even know what to look for while looking at these photos he claims to have taken in the year 5000. So you guys let me know, you Photoshop experts watching this. In our number one spot today, we have Edgar Allan Poe. Okay. I'm not gonna lie, before I started making this list, I was not convinced that time travel would be a possibility, but after making this list, I think 
I might be convinced that Edgar Allan Poe is a time traveler. Seriously, just hear me out on this one. There are two main examples why, and I'm gonna do my best to keep them concise. So firstly, Poe's only completed novel was published in 1838, and it tells the tale of mutiny on a whaling ship lost at sea. The men on the ship realize that they need to resort to some extreme measures in order to stay alive, so they begin drawing straws to see who they're going to sacrifice for food. A boy named Richard Parker drew the shortest straw, and therefore he became the next meal. Okay, so let's fast forward 46 years to 1884, and in real life, there are now four men who have been set adrift after the sinking of a yacht. These men found themselves in a similar predicament to the novels, and I kid you not, they ended up taking the same route and elected to take the life of, and then eat, a cabin boy. The cabin boy's name? Richard Parker. Not convinced yet? Well, what if I told you that he accurately predicted a scientific advancement before it was even known by, well, scientists? In 1840, Poe penned the gruesome story The Businessman, in which the narrator suffers a traumatic head injury as a child and later lives a violent life. The weird thing about this story is that he was able to grasp frontal lobe injury so well before it was even a thing that was able to be greatly studied, as the first time behavioral change caused by this kind of injury were able to be studied. And see, we watch a lot of these unsolved and solved cases. And I was thinking about that the other day, man. We've got to do more and more studies on these people who do these things and pref more so on the brain. The brain, the behavioral part of the brain. And that should see where the disconnect is between the way we think and the way they think and how they process and how they don't process and how they have no emotion to commit some of the crimes that they do, man. I was thinking about that the other day, bro. It's weird that she's saying that. Maybe she's time traveling in my head or something like that. I don't know. That he didn't come until 1848. An actual neurologist, Eric Altschuler, wrote, there's a dozen symptoms and he knows every single one. There's everything in that story. We've hardly learned anything more. It's so exact that it's just weird. It's like he had a time machine. Maybe I didn't convince you, but I'm not gonna lie. This convinced me. All right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thank you. Yeah, that 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 story from him and those predictions. Those was one of the things that sold me on some other videos, bro. That's not the first time I've heard his story. So, but um, you don't have to believe at all. This is only just to, as as people say, wake you up a little bit. This is just to wake you up and and get your mind thinking of what could be possible or to look further into how some of these things are being predicted. You know, are the Simpsons, are they time travelers? How do they keep predicting some of the things that they continuously predict? Somebody's a time traveler within the Simpsons cast or, or crew or producer or something. Whoever's the creator, something. Somebody knows something. It, it just keeps happening. Coincidence, not after like 10 to 20 to 1,000 times, however many times they predict this stuff. You know what I mean? But y'all get at me in the comment section, man. Top 10 most convincing cases of time travel. Till next reaction, I'm gone. Peace.